every time I get behind the wheel on one of these, I tell myself I need to buy one. Ladies and gentlemen, special treat for you today. We got a three-way JDM shootout. I'm currently in a 2022 Subaru BRZ. We're comparing it to a 2004 Mazda RX-8 GT and also a 2005 Honda S2000. So three Japanese cars. They're all around 3,000 pounds or slightly less. All front engine, rear wheel drive. And this is gonna be a very interesting comparison. Now this 2022 Subaru BRZ that I'm in, this is the limited trim. It is the higher trim versus their premium, which is the lower trim. And this is not stock. This car is Fenton Sons from the Zygreen YouTube channel. And he has annex coilovers, which were just recently done. He's still dialing them in, so the rear is a little bit stiff right now. He's got a color fittings oil cooler. He's on the stock wheels with PS4 rubber and Ray Bestos ST45 front pads and an AWE touring exhaust. This is a platform I am very familiar with. I've owned and dailyed as my only car, a 2013 Scion FRS for nine years. And I still have the car, um, but now I have a GR86 as well. So I know this platform pretty well. And let's see how it drives. Now I have driven this car before, but now that I've owned my GR86 for a bit, I've noticed that the steering is actually different between the GR86 and the BRZ. I've driven two GR86s, I've only driven this BRZ. The BRZ steering is tuned slightly differently by Subaru than how Toyota chooses to do so. It feels a little bit lighter. And it doesn't seem to have as much feedback as the GR86. The GR86 gives me a little bit more communication through the wheel. Granted, my GR86 is on Primacy's. I still have the stock set up there. But this is a platform that's just so easy to drive. It's so well balanced. Rotates under throttle. The new, the new uh, transmission, the gear selector just it's not quite S2000 level, but it's so satisfying. So easy to use. The second gen compared to the first gen is improved in most ways. The steering being a pretty substantial downgrade in my opinion. Much less feedback, a little bit too light, but still good, still good. But they took something that was great and they made it good. The stock suspension setup is actually quite good in that it's comfortable and still because of how low the center of gravity is, you don't get much body roll. With this coilover setup, it's obviously a little bit too a little bit too stiff and the owner acknowledges that and he's, he's still working on tweaking it but especially on this road the bumps are are a bit much this is easily upsetting the car one thing to also keep in mind with regards to the steering is that he has not done an alignment yet since installing the coilovers so the steering is not quite centered when you're driving it straight, and that's also gonna influence the steering feel, as well as some of the turn-in behavior. These cars, when they come stock, they don't have nearly enough camber, so they tend to understeer. If you come into a corner, hot. And then they give way to oversteer as you keep pushing and give it some throttle. It's such a rewarding and playful chassis, and at $30,000, this is really hard to beat. But the RX-8 and S2000 on the used market, well, the S2K is now around 30 k You can get some, some examples a little bit below that, around 25. I've actually been looking at a lot of S2000s uh, since I've reviewed a few on this channel because I love that platform. So with 30K, what do you do? S2000, 
BRZ, Mazda RX-8. You'll have some money left over with the RX-8. Now compared to those other cars, this has the weakest engine in that, in a few ways. Number one, it sounds like a garbage disposal, uh, whereas the other ones don't. And the red light on this car is around 7,400 RPM. The other two sing all the way up to 9,000. The engine has never been the strong suit of this car. It has its advantages with the Boxer 4. This is now a 2.4 liter. It still has a very low center of gravity like the first gen. But obviously the power delivery is not optimal. Although with, again, this 2.4 versus the two in the first gen, uh, they've taken care of that torque dip, that nasty, nasty torque dip that everyone hated so much. And it doesn't sound as much like a garbage disposal as the first one. But it's not an engine that really rewards you and eggs you on in the same way as some of these other examples. But with that being said, let's hop into the S2000 and see how that compares. All right, now we're in the Honda S2000. This is a 2005, therefore AP2 example. In terms of suspension setup, we have 10K springs all around, square setup, with Eibach front sway bar, which is stiffer, and the stock rear sway bar. Wheels are Advans, 9.5 inches wide, wrapped in RT66 tires, 255 40s. We have an HKS SSM exhaust and EVS high flow cat. This Recaro RSGK bucket is extremely tight. This is like JDM spec, so smaller bodies. I can barely fit in this. I am a skinnier build, six foot one. But uh, let's see how this thing drives. Right off the bat, you know I have to talk about it, steering. So with these wider tires, the stock car comes with 215s in the front, and I believe 245 or 235s in the rear. This is 255 square setup. So the already problematic steering feedback of the S2000 is now worsened by these wider tires. So. Steering is, is accurate, but is completely lacking feedback. I mean, the BRZ example I drove was not spectacular, but it definitely had better feedback than this S2000. In terms of accuracy, they're both pretty similar, both quite precise. Transmission on this is sublime. The S2000 has the best gearbox that I have ever driven. And as an AP2, this red line's at 8,000 RPM. And boy, does it sing. It encourages you. With the suspension setup, 10K all around. It's pretty soft for a coilover, aftermarket coilover setup. And it's similar to Olin's. Olin's are 10K front, 8K rear, I believe. And this is actually quite quite appropriate for street use. It'd be too soft for track use, of course. These Project New pads are a little bit too grabby for my liking. I've been driving this car for 10 minutes and I can't, I, I still can't quite modulate them at the initial bite smoothly. There's, they're, they're, they're zero or a hundred. As for the tires, very, very high grip. Quite challenging to, to break any traction. Not gonna be doing that on this road today. Now with the handling dynamics, I've always considered the S2000 to be a little bit sharper than the twins, the FRS, BRC, GR86, GT86. And part of that is actually due to the double wishbone front suspension. So at turn-in on the twins, you can feel some understeer you're coming in hot. Whereas the S2000 it is so, it's so eager to turn, it's so precise, much sharper. And the overall chassis dynamics are also just a little more lively. The BRZ and the Twins, they feel almost like in slow-mo. If you get into understeer, you get into oversteer, it's very, it's a great learning tool, a great car to start with because with that slow motion kind of feel, you have time to catch, you have time to learn. The S2000, especially the AP1s, are a little more twitchy, a little bit more razor edge. And I like that personally. Having the hard top, this is OEM hard top, it takes away that open top driving experience. But this is a 
a good example. This is actually very, I'm not hearing any squeaks from the front, a little bit from the rear. We got three hardtop FR Japanese GDM cars today that we're comparing. And with these brakes being so grabby, it's hard for me to heel toe appropriately because my, my pedal, I can't push the brake pedal too hard, otherwise the car slows down too fast. This has always felt a little bit more purposeful than the twins. It feels a little bit more focused, more razor edge as I said. And it's really peak Honda. I am, I mean we're all sad that Honda no longer makes a car like this in the lineup. Because what Honda is able to do when they want to make a rear engine sports car, sorry a rear wheel drive sports car, the fact that we're talking about this car 20 years later, that speaks for itself. Being in 05, this also has cable actuated throttle, which gives it a much sharper throttle response than the BRZ. The 04 and the 05 are the only two model years of the AP2S2000 with a cable throttle body. I get behind the wheel on one of these, I tell myself I need to buy one. And this is a particularly good example. I mean, this car has 74,000 miles, so it's not as as mint as uh, the yellow the yellow S2000 I drove in that previous video. But this is well set up. The reason I have not bought an S2000 is number one, the prices are, are bonkers, and they'll probably only continue to rise. And number two, I live in Las Vegas. And having this car in Las Vegas just isn't fitting. Having it in a place like California is definitely better suited. Out of the three cars, this is obviously the least practical. You have the least cargo room. The other two actually have two somewhat usable rear seats and a pinch you can fit people back there. The RX-8 actually has a quite usable rear seat compared to the BRZ. So it would be hard to own this as a single, your one and only car, your daily, your everything. But out of the three, this is the most focused. This is, when you think of JDM Excellence, I think of the S2000, what a car. All right, time for the RX-8. And finally, we're in the 2004 Mazda RX-8 GT. This has a 1.3 liter rotary engine, pushing out 238 horsepower. The car is the heaviest at 3,029 pounds, whereas both the BRZ and the S2000 are close to the 27 or 2,800 pound range. In terms of mods, we have this 330 millimeter steering wheel, substantially smaller than, than OEM. We have the full mod list down in the description, but we have TC 105X wheels, 18 by 9.5, wrapped in Advan Apex tires, 265s all around. HKS Hypermax S coilovers, RB intake, headers midpipe. That's a long list, you guys can check in the description below. But let's see how this thing drives. Right off the bat, you guys know I'm gonna talk about, of course, the steering. This is the only hydraulic rack of the group. And oh my God, do I like a good hydraulic rack. I mean, what guy doesn't like a nice rack? This, the feedback on this car, on this car steering is substantially better than both the S2000 and the BRZ. In terms of accuracy and precision, it's pretty similar. But the feedback is really where it shines. And it helps you inspire, it helps inspire confidence when you're pushing the car a little bit more. Coilovers, a little bit stiff for a road like this, but this road is a bit bumpy. Having this smaller wheel, this Sparco 330 millimeter, is also a nice touch. It gives it a little bit of a heavier feel compared to the, the stock steering wheel. Which I appreciate. It also feels faster because you have a smaller wheel, right, versus a larger wheel. Definitely helps with a sportier feel, sportier driving engagement. Another thing that's really interesting is how much more upright you are in this car. The driving position is not nearly as sporty, low, laid back as the S2000 or the BRZ. This feels much more upright. However, I do really like how the steering wheel comes out quite far. Not sure if that's uh, due to 
the steering mods he's done or if that's or if even OEM it comes out quite far but I feel like the steering wheel is close enough and my legs have enough uh, room as well in terms of the transmission this is probably similar level to the BRZ in terms of how strong it is it's not as tight and notchy as the S2000 but it is a very good transmission rolling through these gears is definitely a pleasure that 9000 rpm though oh my god I love me a high revving naturally aspirated engine and because it's a rotary this thing is so smooth so smooth the project mu pads they took a while to heat up on the way up i uh <laughs> there's a couple of points where i was like wait why is this car not stopping so once you get some heat into them stopping power is good but the initial bite is a little bit lacking there's a bit of travel in the brakes in the first centimeter or so where you don't feel anything at all this car is the largest and the heaviest of the three only a couple hundred pounds heavier but it definitely feels the largest too when you drive it it handles its weight well don't get me wrong but it's not as tight and as nimble as the other two those are two two uh two door coupes this is a i mean would you call this a four door with the suicide doors gas pedal is a little bit too far out when you're hitting on the brakes. Which is usually the opposite problem for most cars where the brake, the gas pedal is too deep inset, but in this car it's the opposite. The transmission has a little bit too much lateral slop. I would say it's actually probably a little bit worse than the BRZ's shifter. I would say Honda S2000, then BRZ, then the RX-8 in terms of shifting. The heel toe is also not ideal. Having that double wishbone all around, because this does share a lot of the similar components to the NC Miata, which is the Miata of its era. You get a nice turn in. And while the suspension is, is stiff, this car has a higher center of gravity and it's heavier, and therefore you don't quite get the same uh, nimble turn-in and level cornering from the other cars, the S2000 and the BRZ. In terms of power, the, the power holds this car back a little bit, a little bit. Not as severe as something like an FRS, right? But this car would, would be a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit better balanced if it had a little bit more power. Now the S2000, I feel like that car is well balanced in, in the sense that you don't feel like the power or lack thereof is limiting it in any way. In this car, a little bit more top end power. I mean, after 6000, you feel it come alive, but having a little more oomph would, would balance the car out slightly better. But man, I'm loving this engine more than I thought I would. The rotary is so smooth. It sounds great. I mean, of the three cars, so you're obviously making trade-offs, right? So with this car, you're getting a lot of practicality. You're getting four seats, and the two rear seats here are possibly marginally more usable than the BRZ, which isn't saying much, but more usable rear space, larger car overall, still has really, really strong driving dynamics. It's not quite as nimble in terms of rotation with throttle compared to the S2000 and the BRZ, but it's still quite strong, especially when you compare it to modern vehicles. The driving dynamics on this car are very, very strong. So overall across the board, we'll say the steering goes Number one, RX-8. Number two, BRZ. Number three, Honda S2000. In terms of the gear selector, it goes Honda S2000, followed by the BRZ, followed by the Mazda RX-8. And in terms of chassis dynamics, I would say Honda S2000, 
then BRZ, then RX-8. Practicality, RX-8, BRZ, S2000, in that order. In terms of engine, well, I'll say that the RX-8, the rotary engine, has a unique uh, maintenance and uh, a, a, different, a different type of attention and care you need to give it compared to the other cars. So with the engine, I would say Honda S2000, then RX-8, then BRZ. But when you're comparing these cars, you need to figure out what do you prioritize? So I obviously love steering a lot. So the steering to this really stands out to me. The transmission is also a very important part of driving engagement. And the S2000 has its strength there. In terms of the, the inputs here with the pedal box, they are important and I think it's a little bit lacking in the RX-8. The other cars are definitely stronger with the, the, the three pedals and the pedal box as well, the placement. But overall, you're not gonna go wrong with any of these three. Three awesome JDM cars. Let me know what you guys think with a comment down below. Thanks for watching my friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. Much love and I'll see you guys in that next one. challenging to drive quickly in the corners though because of that. The, the front end gets light the moment I